the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, better known as the Night Stalkers. They're renowned for their exceptional abilities and for having transported the Navy SEALs that executed Operation Neptune Spear in 2011. Additionally, they made indelible contributions during the Battle of Mogadishu in 1993. However, the Night Stalkers' most daring mission remains relatively obscure. Taking place in June 1988 within Chad, their sole objective was the acquisition of a Soviet military Mi-25 Hind attack helicopter, which had been abandoned by the Libyans after years of conflict in the African nation. The United States held a particular fascination with obtaining this helicopter, as it was the export version of the Soviet Mil Mi-25, driven by their pursuit of gaining an advantage in every facet of the Cold War. The CIA harbored a strong desire to comprehensively examine the attack helicopter in order to potentially develop a comparable aircraft for the United States and its allies. The Chadian-Libyan conflict presented the CIA with a unique opportunity to acquire the helicopter and thoroughly analyze its technological aspects. Operation Mount Hope 3 unfolded immediately after the conclusion of the protracted Chadian-Libyan War that spanned from 1978 to 1987 with the mission to capture the Soviet-made helicopter. A decade before the outbreak of the Chadian-Libyan War, escalating tensions arose with the ascent of Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi. In his pursuit of power, Gaddafi asserted ownership over a territory known as the Azuzu Strip, a vast expanse of 44,000 square miles situated primarily within the Sahara Desert along the Chad-Libya border. On August 27, 1971, Chad leveled accusations against Egypt and Libya, alleging their involvement in a coup against President Francois Tambulbaye. Following the failed coup attempt, Tambulbaye severed all diplomatic ties with Libya and Egypt and extended an invitation to Libyan opposition groups to seek refuge in Chad. In response, the Libyan dictator made the decision to officially recognize the Chad insurgent group as the legitimate Chadian government. Diplomatic relations between the two countries were eventually restored in 1972 when Chad agreed to relinquish the Azuzu Strip to Libya in exchange for 50 million US dollars. To solidify this agreement, Chad and Libya signed a Treaty of Friendship in December 1972, formalizing the terms of the deal. By 1978, the previously amicable ties between Chad and Libya had disintegrated, giving way to a state of hostility. Chad became embroiled in a devastating conflict with various Chadian factions receiving support from France, while the Chadian insurgent group enjoyed backing from Libya. Despite French intervention in the conflict, their efforts proved futile, and the hostilities persisted well into the 1980s. By September 1987, the war reached its conclusion as the Chadian forces, surpassing the Libyan troops in numbers, successfully reclaimed authority over the Azuzu Strip. However, their triumph was short-lived. As Libya swiftly regained control in a subsequent battle, the Libyan army suffered significant losses including thousands of troops and millions of dollars worth of tanks, weapons, and equipment which were either destroyed or abandoned during their retreat. The retreat left behind 20 aircraft at the Wadi Doom Air Base. One, in particular, caught the attention of the U.S. military. During its era, the Mil Mi-25 Hind D stood out as one of the most advanced Soviet helicopters, surpassing anything comparable in the U.S. arsenal. It earned the moniker Devil's Chariot by troops in Afghanistan. This formidable aircraft displayed remarkable versatility, functioning both as an attack helicopter and a transport vehicle featuring six weapon units on its wingtips, a potent four-barreled Yak-B-12-7 machine gun, and a capacity for up to 12 anti-tank missiles. The Mi-25 proved itself to be an adaptable and unparalleled helicopter. It was abundantly equipped with high-explosive fragmentation warheads that possesses the ability to pierce substantial armor. Weighing in at 18,000 pounds, undoubtedly it stands as the epitome of a helicopter, and its theft from directly under Libya's nose proved to be an exceedingly challenging mission. Through negotiations with Chad, the United States successfully secured permission to embark on an operation to recover the Mi-25s. Despite the Chadian government's reluctance to provide direct assistance, as a gesture of cooperation, 
Chad received a substantial sum of $2 million along with Stinger missiles from the CIA. Tasked with the retrieval mission was, of course, the renowned Night Stalkers. This elite regiment was specifically formed for precisely such operations, making them the ideal choice for the challenging mission at hand. The mission presented a series of distinct obstacles. Under the cover of darkness, the team had to navigate their flight to the designated location. Once there, they faced the daunting task of skillfully sling-loading the colossal helicopter while ensuring its secure transportation without alerting Libyan guards in the vicinity. In April 1988, the troops initiated their preparations by conducting training exercises in the New Mexico deserts, utilizing Boeing MH-47 Chinook helicopters. To replicate the weight of the Mi-25, one of the Chinooks carried a simulated load of six 1,900-liter water containers. On June 10th, a group of more than 60 personnel embarked on a Lockheed C-5 Galaxy aircraft which accommodated two MH-47 helicopters in its cargo hold. Departing from Fort Campbell, Kentucky, the team traveled to N'Djamena International Airport in Chad, where they unloaded the C-5 and loaded the two helicopters. Setting off on their journey to Wadi Doom, spanning 550 miles, the team commenced their midnight flight. Ensuring the utmost secrecy was crucial for the mission's success, as any knowledge leaked to Libyan forces could jeopardize its outcome. The presence of Libyan forces in the target area heightened concerns, with apprehensions that the Mi-25 might become a target for missile bombing as part of the Soviet Union's efforts to hinder covert recovery operations. At Wadi Doom, a ground team had already commenced preparations for the helicopter's transport. Due to the inherent risks involved, flying the Mi-25 was deemed too hazardous, as one of its engines had sustained a bullet hole. Consequently, the rotors were detached in readiness for transportation. The Chinooks arrived at the location with their additional fuel tanks removed to ensure their capability to lift the Soviet chopper. The Mi-25 was carefully slung-loaded beneath one of the American helicopters, while the second Chinook followed closely behind, and together they departed towards safety. As the team neared N'Djamena International Airport, they encountered a formidable sandstorm that enveloped their surroundings, severely hampering visibility. Both Chinooks proceeded at a reduced speed and kept each other in sight to avoid any potential collision amid the turbulent onslaught of desert dust. Against the odds, they successfully landed with the prized Mi-25, achieving their objective without a single shot fired or personnel left behind. Following the cessation of the storm, the Mi-25 was transported and loaded onto a C-5 aircraft, alongside with the two Chinooks which were positioned in a separate aircraft. On June 16, 1988, the Soviet helicopter reached Fort Rucker, Alabama, where meticulous efforts were undertaken to restore it to operational condition. Thorough evaluations were conducted to gain in-depth knowledge of enemy capabilities, afterwards serving to inform and train personnel. The Mi-25 actively participated in training exercises, assuming the role of an imposing force for U.S. helicopters and ground soldiers. In 2012, the aircraft found its new home at the Southern Museum of Flight in Birmingham, Alabama, sparing it from the impending fate of being scrapped. Undoubtedly, it stands as one of the most daring operations carried out by the U.S. Special Operations Forces ranking among the remarkable successes achieved by the Night Stalkers. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.